Thank you for inviting me to be here at this uh, wildlife symposium to share with you about traditional Chinese medicine and its work and its challenge. I am not a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. I represent the traditional Chinese medicine as an educator. I've been working as an educator in this field since 1989 in US. I learned more about what traditional Chinese medicine was truly about after I got involved and start to be involved in wildlife conservation after WWF approached me in 1997. Realized that there's a big gap between traditional Chinese medicine and wildlife conservation. Even today, when I'm at this symposium, I still feel we have the gaps in communication and understanding. What is traditional Chinese medicine? Here we talk about the uh, medicine. And let me share with you about different perspectives of this ancient medicine. Traditional Chinese medicine is an ancient and profound healing art that originated more than 3,000 years ago. As a medical system, in ancient times, it has been used to prevent, diagnose, and treat uh, diseases. TCM is based on the premise that when a human body is kept in a harmonious condition, health and well-being are naturally maintained. They often used a word called qi, is the major life force that flows through human body, providing vitality of life. It regulates physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual balance. When illness occur caused by disease, stress, or poor diet, an imbalance may result. Traditional Chinese medicine acts to reinstate the free flow of qi and TCM therapy, restoring balance and health for people. This is what traditional Chinese medicine is truly about. I use TCM as traditional Chinese medicine. TCM comprises a number of therapeutic process or practices. Chinese acupuncture is to use the insertion of very fine and disposable needles as specific points on the surface of the skin, influencing the physiological functioning of the body. This is very widely used in the West, Chinese acupuncture. Chinese herbal medicine is personalized to the specific needs of each individual, resulting in minimal side effects treating the individual to bring the health back for health, uh, healthy uh, balance. Moxibustion is used to warm an acupressure point or meridian with Chinese herb called Ai Ye. It is used to treat conditions such as arthritis, pain, and cold. Cupping is another technique used for back, shoulder, and neck pain. Tui Na is a part of traditional Chinese medicine as physical massage. Used kneading, pressing, rolling, and a stretching of the body to regulate qi and blood flow and improve function of tendons, bones, and joints. 
So you could see the variety of uh, therapeutic treatments in traditional Chinese medicine. Tai Ji Quan and Qi Gong are energetic exercises that empower individuals to improve internal and external uh, health through regular physical exercises. All of them have long proven efficacy in treating a wide range of medical conditions. U.S. National Health Institute funded a number of research projects in traditional Chinese medicine. Most of them are in Chinese acupuncture with a few in Chinese herbal medicine, Tai Ji Quan and Qi Gong. The two largest research projects in U.S. right now, funded by NIH, are conducted at Harvard Medical School and Stanford Medical School in pain management with Chinese acupuncture. Why does traditional Chinese medicine effectively treat? Why do people still use an ancient medical healing system with 3,000 years today when Western medicine is very well developed and established? According to the World Health Organization, TCM and acupuncture has proven effectiveness in treatment of many common health issues. Here is a list given by WHO for what Chinese medicine could treat. I work at the American College of Traditional Chinese Medicine at CIS in San Francisco. Over there, the faculty and graduate students actively treat patients from all parts of life. These are all American patients. Let me share with you what are the commonly medical conditions that the faculty and graduate students treat at the community clinic. Usually they would treat about 30,000 patient visits in this clinic. Upper respiratory, such as common cold, cough, asthma, bronchitis. OBGYN, this is very commonly used by American patients for supporting pregnancy, fertility, irregular menstruation, PMS, menopause. Another very common treat in the clinic is gastrointestinal, diarrhea, digestion, ulcer, IBS, vomiting, nausea, poor appetite. Cardiovascular condition is also often uh, treated at the clinic. Heart disease and hypertension. Immune deficiency, allergies, chronic fatigue, chemotherapy, support often need for patients with cancer going through chemotherapy, acupuncture Chinese help, uh, pay, uh, you know, medicine help tremendously for patients going through chemotherapy. Autoimmune disease. We also help patients with mental and emotional health issues, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, memory loss, stress. We all know stress caused a lot of health issues and Chinese medicine treats stress very effectively. Musculatin problem, neck pain, back pain, headache, frozen shoulder, migraines, as well as tennis elbow, sports injury, arthritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, addiction, smoking, chemical dependency treatments. What the Chinese people discovered over 3,000 years ago through practical experience over many centuries 
is now increasingly being validated by modern science and medicine. Uh, this is something that we should know. In 2015, Nobel Prize winner Tu Yu Yu, as the first woman in China, uh, received her Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine. She discovered Qing Hao Su, which is a chi from Chinese herb and used to treat malaria, which has saved millions of lives. Her discovery is regarded as a significant breakthrough in 20th century, tropical medicine, and an important health improvements for people of tropical developing countries, especially in South Asia, Africa, and South America. So we could tell this medicine with such a long history now is going worldwide. It's no longer just used by 1.4 billion people in China. It is now used in many countries. Let me give you an example of how this medicine is spread in the United States. In the United States, education and licensure standards are very well established. Master degree or professional doctor degree education programs are required as entry level to this profession. U.S. Department of Education provides federal financial aid to graduate students studying traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. The length of program is four to five academic years. There's a national certification recognized by 45 states in U.S. legalized protecting the practice of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. This ancient medical system is now moving from alternative to integrative in U.S. today. This is the statistics that I can share with you, 72 million adults in US use CAM therapy, including traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture. We all talk about the 21st century that medical shift is going to become patient-centered. I can tell you, traditional Chinese medicine is very patient-centered healthcare system. It promotes wellness and healthy lifestyle to prevent diseases. There was an old story saying in ancient times, traditional Chinese medical doctors were not paid by patients when they were sick. They would be only paid when people stayed healthy. So prevention, wellness, and healthy lifestyle would be very much emphasized in this medicine. WHO, the new ICD-11 medical codes include traditional Chinese medicine. And this is going to change the landscape of what medicine is about in 21st century. Here is a list of how Chinese medicine acupuncture is included in healthcare system, a uh, few examples. You could tell internationally, this happens in Switzerland, Germany, China, and India. Oncology is the area that very uh, actively exploring how to include this into patient care. So in US, these are very well-known oncology centers uh, using acupuncture Chinese medicine in cancer patient care. Here's another example. Nationally in US, we see a number of 
medical research institutions use acupuncture Chinese medicine. And I came from California, so I gave you a few California examples to show that these medical universities, UCSF, UCSD, and UC Irvine, UCLA, all have practices and um, research projects in traditional Chinese medicine. Highland Hospital, Oakland, is the first public hospital that brought acupuncture Chinese medicine into the healthcare. I would like to take a stop here before I move to the next. I think the you know, uh, trend we could tell is this traditional medicine is now moving beyond just in China. TCM as a medical practice goes together with Western medical practice side by side. This happened in 1950s in China. Now it is going to other countries. TCM is not only practiced in China and US, but in Germany, France, Canada, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Israel, Russia, Brazil, South Africa, Zambia, and in over 80 countries of the world. This ancient medical system does not only serve the people in one country, it serves the people in the world. It provides an effective and a very valuable healthcare support with safety and low cost to people in various countries. Each year, there are 10,000 international students go to China studying traditional Chinese medicine in Chinese medical universities. It became the largest number of international student population in one subject area. When these students graduate, they return to their own countries. They bring traditional Chinese medicine back to their countries and serve their own people. While TCM serves the people, there are many challenging issues for Chinese herbal medicine. We heard a lot today, and we will continue to hear them tomorrow. Chinese herbal medicine is a major part of traditional Chinese medicine. China's relationship with medical animals and plants spans at least over 2,000 years. In ancient times, traditional Chinese medical healers lived in local villages, treated people in local areas with medicinal plants, minerals, and animals. There was almost no demand to wildlife or to the local environment due to all the practices were local based. However, today, things completely have changed. Today, the world faces the largest human population with the biggest demand for natural resources, destroying the wildlife in planet. To protect endangered species, China has banned all the uses of wild tigers and rhino horns from traditional Chinese medicine since 1993. Tiger bones and rhino horns are removed from all TCM textbooks from univer for university students. The World Federation of Chinese Medicine Societies at Beijing urged its 200,000 medical practitioners in China and in the world not to use endangered species. As a medical profession, TCM supports saving the endangered species and oppose illegal trade. We should invite them at the discussion and create partnership with the TCM doctors, 
researchers, and academic institutions. They are not here at this symposium. They should have been brought in at this discussion. This is a very important strategy that we need to bring these medical professionals into this work. There are two major, um, you know, there are two major different groups of people using so-called traditional medicine. One is the patient group. Seeing doctors in hospitals with medical diagnosis and receiving medical prescriptions. You do not see the endangered species be used in herbal formulas in those hospitals or clinics. The other is consumers purchasing products for traditional food therapies or remedies as nutrition, so-called nutrition, or as gifts from legal and illegal markets without medical advices from TCM doctors. This is where we face the challenge. Besides consumers, we have other challenges from business industries, including restaurant business serving dishes, soup, and wine with traditional medicinal herbs and animal parts. Such a restaurant business exists in a number of Asian countries with long history and traditions for medicinal food. It will take us years and efforts to regulate these industries and to educate consumers. However, we need to start now. We urge the international societies to work with government agencies to strengthen the law enforcement to reduce illegal wildlife trade. We could see from the presentations this morning, the decrease of shark fin is a good example. When the law enforcement is really supported, then the market will change. And I hope we can continue to see those changes. Let's talk about our next step. I highly recommend that educating consumers, building strong partnerships, strengthening law enforcement would be the strategies to reduce illegal wildlife trade. We need to come up with new strategies to save endangered wildlife. I hope this symposium presents us with the urgency and the opportunity. Thank you very much.